Hi guys, in this video, I'm gonna try and put away some of my other distractions and get my first full unit of Oathmark soldiers painted. Scruffy Crow. So these guys have been on the schedule for ages and I just keep putting them off. Uh, Cause it's quite a daunting task painting a full unit like this. I've not actually painted a proper unit since I finished my dwarf army. Uh, but no, I can't put it off any longer. We're gonna do these guys. So I've decided I'm gonna go with a green and yellow color scheme uh, to make them different from any other army I've done and try and stay with that sort of nature vibe. I'm gonna use this uh, foundry forest green and yellows, the sort of lighter pastel yellow that this comes out as, um, as the as the basis for the colour scheme. Now annoyingly for soldiers, so, I've unlo so kind of unlike my dwarves, there's a few different sort of layouts of outfit here. Um, which is a little bit frustrating if I'm honest. I think I'm just going to go ahead and try and do all 20 at once. Um, 20 is actually not a big batch paint, I've done worse. So I shouldn't have too much trouble. I've more or less instantly changed my mind about uh, doing the skin tones using the foundry paints. The first colour is very similar, that's the Idrin Flesh that I normally use, that's the foundry version. Uh, but the Idrin Flesh covers so much nicer, uh, so I'm going to stick with that for now. Okay, so the flesh tones are basically complete on these guys. Uh, there obviously wasn't much to do, just the faces and the hands, remembering the hand behind the shield. Uh, and I'm pretty happy the way they've come out. Uh, next stage is going to be the colours, the main colours. So we're using uh, this green, which is a nocturne green, uh, which I'm going to start using along with the forest green as well. I'm going to use the forest green system from uh, Foundry uh, to get the final green on these parts. And then on the yellow parts, this is going to be Avil and Sunset. And once again, I'll be using the Foundry uh, yellows uh, because they give a nice sort of lemony, soft yellow uh, that I quite like, rather than having a, a vivid, like acid yellow like that. Uh, they're a lot sort of more soft on the eyes, which I think is gonna work quite nicely. Uh, I did wanna use the Foundry paints, sort of the full set ABC uh, as, you know, for the base. But I found that these Games Workshop paints cover so much better. Um, I mean, that yellow is just one thin coat uh, straight over the sort of black. So, yeah, I'll stick with these to get the bases down and then I'll move on to the foundries to build up the colours. Uh, these colours are obviously going to account for the bulk of these models. Any fabric that I don't do green or yellow, I'm just going to do in this. Uh, great cut grey, which I find fades into the background, so it'll be a nice colour for the fabric, um, but it won't be something that'll stick out at you. Uh, and I'll use that for things like around their necks. Uh, this guy's got a little bit of fabric in here, his trousers. I'll get all of that with the grey to make it look like sort of grey wool, I guess. Ignore my fingers, by the way, I've just been spraying some halflings. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to get all those different bits of fabric uh, blocked out uh, and I'll start highlighting them up and then we'll really get to see what this unit's going to look like. Okay, so it's taken me two days just to get the green and the yellow one. Uh, partly just because it's taken a long time and partly because I keep getting distracted by other figures uh, and bits and pieces. But I think, you know, they now they've got the yellow and green, I really am getting it a sense of what they're going to look like as a unit and I'm really keen uh, to get these finished. Potentially I shouldn't have done 20 at a time. I think I'll learn from this next time I do a unit of the soldiers uh, and I'll do, do like 10 at a time maybe. Um, I think before I go any further I'm going to now take the yellow and the green as it is and I'm going to highlight both up. Okay so it was a fair chore but the green and the yellow are their final colours now. Uh, the contrast's not as good as I'd like. Uh, as you can see, it's not really showing up on the camera. It does look better in person. Um, 
but I don't know if I'll do anything to fix that. Um, but yeah, pretty happy with the colour scheme, pretty happy with the green and the way that's come out anyway. Uh, so next up I'm going to be doing the leather. So this is going to be their braces uh, and then a number of them have these sort of leather tunics that I'm going to do uh, studded leather. Uh, and then the boots. Basically I'm just going to do all the same colour. The leather is going to be Rhinox hide. I think probably just highlighted with some bootstrap leather. So since last time we looked at them I've re-highlighted the yellow. I took them all the way up to this yellow C which is a sort of nice light colour. That's kind of knocked off some of the acid yellowy tones. Uh, and I think I prefer the, the contrast between those two. I've also gone and put all the grey in and I've made sure any leather parts, the boots, the belts, the pouches are the right kind of brown. This guy represents the next step. So we need metal rims on the shields, helmets, swords. Okay, so I've got a couple more colours ahead on this guy. Uh, so this is bootstrap leather on the uh, sort of leather and there. So now all we're looking for on this one is, oh actually we need to do the braces. But all we're looking for on this one is the brass and we've got all the base colours at least sorted. So this is the first time I'm really going to, I've got an idea of what they're going to look like uh, and I'm pretty happy with it. Still a lot of work to go though. Okay, I'm currently putting the metal on these guys. Uh, so I'm getting them from sort of, okay, so I'm currently putting the metal on these guys. So I'm getting them from here to here. Uh, the swords and helmets and shields are pretty straightforward and I think it's really making the shields work. Um, the bit that's taking a little bit of time though is all these studs. I found the trick to it is to get a little bit more paint on the end of my brush than I normally would, like a little blob, and then just use that little blob carefully just to sort of dab each of these tops. And doing it that way it means I can get through quite a few of these uh, quite quickly. And it doesn't matter if the paint's blobbed on a little bit rised because that just gives more of the effect of the stud. Um, so yeah, it's actually pretty straightforward to do it this way. This one's not too bad. But some of them have got these all the way across the back, so it is taking me that little bit of extra time. Uh, they're almost all there, so we've got a bit of alt block bronze followed by uh, this molten bronze on there. So belt buckles and sword ends. So we've done all the studs, like we said, and we've got uh, the cloaks in grey. And I think the colour scheme is working really nicely. Uh, we've been touching up all the leather. Uh, so the only bits that are left are their, is their hair. Uh, and obviously we want their hair to be slightly different. Uh, some of them are going to be getting some Rhinox hide. Uh, a couple of them will get some Avalon Sunset. We'll get some Zandri Dust in there. A couple might, I might even go for a black. And a few of them will be this Mulnfang Brown. So hopefully that will give me a nice variety of hair colours. And they'll all just be getting uh, washes basically. Uh, probably all just a bit of null Noil. Um, apart from the black, which will get a highlight maybe. Actually, I probably won't use the black. So yeah, so yeah, probably stick to these and then they'll just have a bit of a wash. And then I'll be getting all of the metal parts. Uh, so the swords and helmets mostly and the shield rims, uh, that'll all get a null oil wash. I've also been looking at a few of the faces as well. And I think they're looking all right. Uh, but I think one last sort of real fine highlight uh, with my flayed one flesh as well. Uh, so there's a few more hours work left in these yet, um, but I'm pretty happy with the way they're looking. This session that I'm doing now is the first time that I've really been, you know, looking at them and been really happy with the way they've come out. At one point I was a little bit worried I was going to dislike them and the scheme. Uh, but yeah, I think they're looking pretty cool. Okay, so the base tray is all done now. Uh, and I've just finished using some of this Quicksilver uh, just, to, just to give a quick fleck, uh, mostly to the tops of their helmets and then just to the top sides of the shield bosses, uh, just to make everything look a little bit shinier on the edges of the swords. Uh, I think that's looking pretty good. These are basically done now. Uh, they went past tabletop level a few steps ago, uh, but I'm really happy with how they came out. I did some more little dabs on the faces of the uh, flayed one flesh, uh, just to bring them out a little bit. I've also gone around and painted all their eyes black. Now a lot of these have got quite squinty eyes, so you can't really see where their uh, eyes would be. Uh, but I've gone and yeah, filled in the spaces where that might be in black. Uh, and I'm going to go around and try and put pupils, little wipes, in all of those. 
it is quite a lot of work to do that on all of them, uh, but I really think it brings the moulds to life uh, and it's worthwhile. It's kind of hard to show you on a model how I do it, but basically I paint the eye area in black and then I, uh, what I need is a, a very fine brush um, and I just take a dab of paint on the end and I put one dot there and one dot there and that gives in my eyes. It's particularly tricky on these models as they've got sort of under bags that are quite prominent and the eye slits are quite small. I said once again, I think you could get away without doing this step. Uh, it's the only bit that's really taken a steady hand uh, and a fine paintbrush. But I think it's worthwhile. And I've only got 18 more to do now. Okay, we are done with the painting now. To celebrate this, we get to do some finishing touches. Now I bought these specifically for uh, this project. So we've got four and six mil rust grass tufts and then some green little bushy bits. I've also got some of this old uh, Luke's APS uh, foam. Um, actually I don't think it's even called that anymore. I think it's completely geek gaming now. And we've got some of this uh, two mil, uh, Jarvis two mil summer, summer uh, grass as well. I love these little uh, takeaway containers um, for all sorts of things like this. I think it works great, um, but yeah. So we're gonna use a combo of all of this and make some nice lush bases. Uh, I'm gonna start with the taller grass tufts. And now these are self-adhesive ones. And I've said before that I don't trust the self-adhesive ones normally, but these ones are really gooey and they really like, I've just placed that on there and I could basically pick up this entire tray with it. So yeah. So far, I do recommend these warpainter.net ones. They're on eBay. I'll see if I can put a link in the description. Um, my only criticism of them is they're all the same size. They're very uniform. I prefer it when you have different sizes. Don't know where these ones are from, for instance, but you've got sort of little ones and then wider ones. Basically, these little bushes work the same. Okay, little bushes, these are kind of huge. Again, you can cut them down just the same. I've even got these flowers uh, to say where these are from. These are from Tajima One. Look at you, I got these ages ago though, so I can't guarantee these still are out there. Um, and these are a cool way to just add a little bit of colour uh, to these sorts of bases. Okay, next up now I've got the tufts that I want on. Uh, we've got some PVA here and a scrabby old brush. And I'm just gonna paint some random shapes where I want our grass to be. So we're gonna go for the, uh, the Jarvis 2 mil. I actually want quite a lot of this covered because this is gonna be the sort of main, you know, I want these guys to look like they're in some meadows. And this is the main kind of grass there. Something a bit like that. Now we need a little tray. This is actually the lid off my wet palette. And it's nice and smooth and clean. Uh, so it works quite well. And I get some of my grass. This is quite a nice mixture. I quite like this one. Uh, from bright green through to darker colours than this. Uh, so that's quite good. And what I do is I tend to take pinches of it. That's a Dab it down into the uh, into what we made. Now I'm aware I'm a teach uh, that most people already know this stuff. I just want to try and be complete with my video. And I quite enjoy this this step, this uh, this part. Obviously, if you've got a static grass applicator, this is greatly improved by one of them. Uh, but I find just the line down grass bits, if you just blow on them a little bit, that tends to lift them up a bit. And that's kind of what we're going for. And I'm going to basically do that on all of the bases. And then I'm going to go back in and anywhere where we've got too much earth still showing. Some more dots of glue like that. I've got another Another little tray here. This one's actually kind of designed for this sort of thing. I think for actually for beading. It's seen, uh, seen better days. 
Uh, but basically this captures all my excess and you can tap it down to here and there's a lip that catches the stuff and you can pop the end off and pour stuff away. Uh, I don't tend to use that feature too much, but it is a handy little tray. Um, and we're going to get the, the, the course or the two-in-one flock here. And I think Luke used to recommend sieving this, but I like just clumping this on and knock off all the excess. And there we've got little patches of weeds and, and sort of little tufts and lumps. That's exactly what we're going for. Now I actually don't do anything to seal this in at this point. I just trust in the PVA to just sort of hold everything in place. And it mostly just does. I never, I've never had any problem really with these uh, these sort of gel-like tufts. Uh, the static grass as well will hold itself in. The only bits that might come off are some of the bits of foam. Uh, but I only do that as like a, a final layer anyway. So yeah, I'm going to do that to all of the regular bases. Uh, make it all matching with this. And then we'll see what they all look like as a finished item. And well, here we have it. All of the uh, soldiers have had at least a couple of each of the basing elements on there. I've made sure that all of the rims are clear and the circles should all be clear. And I think once they are popped inside there, you can barely see where the circles are, uh, especially from sort of tabletop level. And if I do say so myself, I think those are looking absolutely fantastic. I am really happy with the way these have come out. It's my first unit in the army. Um, you will notice there is no banner yet. I will do a nice sort of fancy banner for these guys um, but that will be in a later video um, so these guys are done for now as I said I am really chuffed with the way they've come out the only the most annoying thing is that I didn't realize until after I started well until after I started painting these guys that these shields have a right way up and actually a few of mine are definitely the wrong way up somehow I managed to reverse a few, but somehow I managed to get more the wrong way up uh, than the right way up. I don't know if you can tell, but yeah, it's slightly longer on the top on this one, which looks better the other way around. These have been a proper chore to get done, uh, but as I said, I think it's worthwhile. And I know I said earlier that maybe I won't try 20 again, but I've already started prepping the next unit, which is a almost full unit, 18 half in arches. And that's all for this video. Please let me know what you thought down in the comments. Uh, maybe subscribe for more. And as ever, thanks for watching. Bye.